Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how native speakers actually talk in English. Have you guys noticed that usually native speakers don't really speak English the way we usually see in textbooks and language classes? That's because native speakers use connected speech and speak in a continuous flow. In this video, I'll explain what connected speech is, how native speakers use it, and how you guys can start speaking English more like a native speaker. So let's begin. So what is connected speech? Connected speech is the way native speakers link words and sounds together when they speak. Instead of pronouncing every single sound separately, native speakers blend words together to make their speech more effortless and flawless. For example, instead of saying, I am going to the store, a native speaker might say, I'm gonna go to the store. This is one of the most important things about English. Guys, if you want to sound more advanced, more like a native speaker, you really need to learn more about connected speech. And you also need to learn how to connect words together correctly. Luckily, we have YouTube, we have TV shows, we have so many resources nowadays that could teach you guys all about connected speech. And I really hope in this video, you will learn at least a little bit about it. One of the most important things you guys can do to really improve your English and start speaking more confidently is working on listening. When you listen to native speakers, you will notice how they connect words together and how they use connected speech. Usually I recommend watching TV shows because it's extremely entertaining, but at the same time, you listen to native speakers. So in this video, I wanna analyze a couple of sentences from five popular TV shows. The Last of Us, You, How I Met Your Father, Emily in Paris and The Office. Let's begin with The Last of Us. So that made electricity? Yeah. Don't ask me, I don't have a clue. Okay, so right now you guys have watched the short clip and now let's try to analyze their conversation. The first sentence was, so that made electricity? Yeah. Don't ask me, I don't have a clue. So here we have a couple of very interesting things happening at the same time. Let's first take a look at the first question. So that made electricity? First of all, when the girl says that and made, she doesn't pronounce the T sound fully. She doesn't say that, that made electricity. This is called a stopped T. She says, that made electricity, that made. She kind of stops the airflow before she has to say made, that made. And also she kind of combines made electricity, right? Made, she combines made and electricity, made electricity. Try not to pause here. Don't say that made electricity. Again, there's no need to. Yeah, it's easy. And now let's look at the final sentence. Don't ask me, I don't have a clue. So here it's very interesting how the guy says the first part. Don't ask me. He doesn't really say don't and he doesn't really say ask. He says, don't ask me, don't ask me. Sounds a little weird when I break it down like this, but when you say it fast, it makes sense don't ask me. This is very common. First of all, the word don't. It's very common in English to drop the T and just say don't, don't. Again, some people might say we kind of do say the T, but it's a stop T, while other people would say we completely drop it. We don't say T at all. Don't, just don't. Don't and then ask me. Some people still do say the letter K here, ask me, don't ask me, which is completely normal. But sometimes, guys, you might hear people drop the K completely and say, don't ask me. And that's it. And it's completely correct. And the final part here, I don't have a clue. Again, instead of saying, I don't have a clue, the guy here says, I don't. I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. And he combines have a clue, have a clue, right? To create this continuous flow, you need to make sure, you know, one word ends and the other one begins. One word ends and the other one begins. This is how we create this continuous flow. 
I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. Also, something that is really interesting here is when I say this sentence fast, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. Sometimes this D can become a fast D. Instead of saying I don't, we can say I don't. I don't have a clue. Native speakers are different too. They all come from different states and they speak English a little bit differently, so no need to worry about it. Before we analyze our second TV show, You, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Lingoda, which is an amazing language learning school. I always tell you guys how important it is to make English a part of your daily routine. And especially when it comes to improving your accent and working on different sounds, doing it every single day will help you a lot. All your efforts will definitely pay off. And I think when it comes to language learning, it can be English, you can be learning, you know, Spanish or any other language, it's extremely important to have a routine. And Legoda has really helped me establish my routine when it comes to learning Spanish. So as I already told you guys, Legoda is one of the top online language schools in the world. They provide classes 24-7 so that you could study anytime, anywhere. They teach four languages, English, French, German, Spanish, and also business English. I really like Lingoda because I can study English in small groups as well as Spanish. It's the same thing in small groups or in one-on-one -on -one classes in private if this is something you're interested in. I think one of the reasons why I love their classes so much is because of their professional teachers. Every time I open my computer and I have a Lingoda class, I'm so excited to talk to my teachers because First of all, they live in different countries. They're from all over the world. Recently, I've talked to a teacher from Colombia. Sometimes I talk to people from Chile and Mexico, and that's amazing because I live in Mexico and sometimes it's just nice to be able to talk to people who live in the same country. But at the same time, it's extremely nice to talk to people who live in a different country because this way you're learning more about a different culture. And obviously when it comes to booking a class on Lingoda, it's extremely easy to do. I usually try to do everything in advance because I like all my classes, all my learning routines to be planned. But if you feel like, oh, right now I have some free time, you can totally open up Lingoda and see what classes they have happening in the next hour, for example. And also, guys, when you take their classes, make sure to check out their downloadable materials before the class, because first of all, they're so interesting. There's so much interesting vocabulary. And at the same time, this allows you to prepare for the class and be ready, be the good student. And you know, just ask the teacher questions if you have some questions about the materials or about the grammar rule or about a word you will be more prepared. So if taking a class on Lingoda sounds like something you wanna do, make sure to use my discount code, Veronica30, to get 30% off. You can also try Lingoda completely for free for seven days by clicking the link in the description. This will give you enough time to take three group classes completely for free. And again, if after the first free week on Lingoda, you decide to continue, you'll be able to use my discount code Veronica30 to get 30% off. Okay, right now let's move on to our second TV show, You. Hi. What are you doing here? I live around the corner. What are you doing sneaking around the building of a murder victim? So let's break down every single sentence. Hi, what are you doing here? This is a little bit interesting because this season of You is based in London. So the girl has a British accent and that's why she says, what are you doing here, right? A little bit differently. Unfortunately, guys, I don't know much about the British accent. And for me, it's a little bit hard to make these sounds. But if she was American and if she pronounce this word with an American accent, it would sound like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So what happens here is first of all, people combine, what are you? What are you doing? What are you doing here? Instead of saying, what are you doing here? First of all, we combine what and are. What a, what a. Almost sounds like water in English. What are ya? Instead of saying you, a lot of people, a lot of native speakers can say ya. Yeah. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? And the guy responds, I live around the corner. 
I live around the corner. The way he said it was, I live around the corner. So first of all, we combine live around, live around, right? We don't pause, we don't say I live around the corner. It's pretty easy to do, just try to make sure your speech flows, right? I live around, I live around. This part here, one word ends and the other word begins. What happens with the word around is also interesting because I feel like the guy in the TV show drops the D sound. He just says, I live around, I live around the corner. And it's completely normal again. We just drop the D. I live around the corner and that's it. And now let's look at the final question, which is a little bit hard to understand just because it's so fast. And what are you doing here sneaking around the building of a murder victim? So this is an interesting question because it's very long and the way the guy says the sentence is pretty fast. So don't worry about it guys, let's break it down. Again, what are you doing? Right? He says it really fast and he says, what are you? What are you doing? Sneaking around the building, the same thing happens to the word around. Again, he doesn't say around. What are you doing sneaking around the building? He just says around. Sneaking around the building. And then he says of a murder victim, of a murder victim. I think this is also a pretty common mistake in English because native speakers say of a of a murder. They don't say of a murder victim. They say of a, of a, and that's it, of a murder victim. Also, this is a very interesting question because of the intonation. Guys, this is again a mistake that a lot of non-native speakers make when they want to speak English faster. They try to just speak super fast and they don't care about their intonation. In reality, intonation is extremely important and even in this question, even when the guy is speaking so fast, he still makes sure to stress the right words. Here in this question, he stresses the words sneaking, building and murder because obviously they're the most important ones in this question. Moving on to How I Met Your Father. This is a really fun TV show and I highly recommend you guys to check it out because the original TV show is called How I Met Your Mother and now they have this one as well. Extremely funny. A uh, book reading? What does that even mean? Maybe an autocorrected book cleaning? <laughs> oh, I bet it's like a open mic thing. So let's break it down. A book reading? What does it even mean? A book reading? Instead of saying a book reading, again, we kind of stop the release of air. We don't try to release it fully, right? We don't say a book reading, even though it's absolutely okay to say it this way. Right now, guys, we're just trying to focus on how native speakers in these TV shows pronounce certain words in English. A book reading? What does that even mean? Again, here the girl didn't say what. She didn't say what does that even mean. She said what does it even mean? Again, fast and stopping the sounds. And basically the same thing happens to the word that. Instead of saying that, the girl just said that. That. We stop the air. What does that even mean? Maybe it autocorrected foot cleaning? Maybe it autocorrected. The same thing happens to the word it. The girl didn't say maybe it autocorrected. She said maybe it. It autocorrected. Maybe it autocorrected foot cleaning. The same thing happened to the word foot. Instead of saying foot, she said foot. Foot cleaning. Oh, I bet it's like a open mic thing. So here the interesting part happens with the word bet, right? Again, instead of saying bet, the girl said, I bet it's like, I bet it's like. So this again is a fast T or a fast D. The same can happen to the letter D in English. Also, she could have stopped the sound, right? She could have said, I bet it's it's totally okay too. It just depends. The reason why she used this fast T sound, fast D, is because the next word, it's, 
starts with the vowel sound. I bet it's like, I bet, I bet, r, r. It's very similar to the R sound. I feel like a lot of people might think I'm saying R in English, like in Spanish, you know, in Spanish, people have this like soft R sound, but it's actually not it. Not quite it. A little bit different, just a little bit. It's still this fast D. I bet it's like, I bet uh, uh, this is the one. I bet it's like. And you might ask me, Veronica, why did she say a open mic thing and not an open mic thing? The reason she was just thinking, right? She didn't know what she wanted to say, so she was like, I bet it's like a, I don't know, a pillow or a bed. Obviously, then it would be correct but because she didn't know and then the next word starts with a vowel sound it's completely fine because she was thinking again guys in informal conversations when people are thinking they need some time to think about grammar as well so it's completely okay that she said i bet it's like a open mic thing moving on to emily in paris a very romantic tv show i bet a lot of you guys have watched it and loved it because it's a great one hi where have you been i'm auditioning three outfits to wear tonight and i almost gave up until i found Found this. Hi, hi, where have you been? I'm auditioning three outfits to wear tonight and I almost gave up until I found this. This is again a very good example of how native speakers sometimes don't rush, you know? Again, it all depends on the situation. Sometimes you need to speak fast, sometimes you need to stress certain words and actually pronounce them a little bit slowly. So I think it's pretty easy with how they say hi, hi, and then the next question is where have you been? Here I think it's interesting the way the girl says the word been in English because it sounds exactly the same as, for example, rubbish bin. The exact same pronunciation. And this pronunciation of this word been, I mean not been, but been, is the American one. Because in British English, people would say bean. Like, for example, if you like bean soup. This is the pronunciation people would use in British English. I'm auditioning three outfits to wear tonight. Three outfits. It's interesting how she says the word outfits. Outfits. Again, we stop the T's. Americans love doing that. I think right now for you guys, it should be pretty clear. So instead of saying out, Fits. It's actually pretty hard to say it this way. She says outfits, outfits. I'm auditioning three outfits to wear tonight. And I almost gave up until I found this. Here she says and I, and I. She didn't pronounce the letter D at all. We just dropped the D, and I, and I almost gave up. With the word, with the word almost, she didn't say and I almost gave up she said and i almost gave up almost gave up actually i feel like she completely dropped the t here but we can also stop the air almost but i feel like in this particular sentence she completely dropped it and i almost gave up the same thing with stopping the airflow can happen to the letter p in english so the girl didn't say up she said up I gave up until I found this. I gave up until I found this. And the final thing here is found this. Again, she dropped the D. <laughs> so again, the girl didn't say found this. She said found this found this. We just connect these two words together, we drop the D. Okay, right now let's move on to something super difficult. The office. I found a part for you guys that is pretty difficult to understand because the guy there is speaking so freaking fast. Let's watch it together. You people don't realize what you're asking. I'd have to rip open the walls. We'd have to shut this place down for a week. <sighs> yeah, guys, I know. It's very fast. So let's break it down. The first sentence. You people don't realize what you're asking. You people don't realize. Again, guys, do you remember from the TV show You? We don't say don't. We just say don't. Don't realize. You people don't realize what you're asking. What you're asking. Whatcha. This is an interesting sound in English. So native speakers don't really say what you are 
asking. What you're asking. What you're asking. Here we add this ch sound, and this happens very, very often. For example, if you want to ask your friend what they're doing, you can say what you're doing. What you're doing. Usually it happens when the letter T is followed by the letter Y. But also something interesting can happen when the letter D is followed by the letter Y. We create this J sound. So for example, did you like the movie? Native speakers will usually say did you? Did you like the movie? This J sound. Did you like the movie? This is how they would say it in connected speech. So let's continue. The second sentence was I have to rip open the walls. I have to, I have to. Instead of saying have to, native speakers obviously will say have to. I have to rip open the walls. The same thing here happens to the word rip. I mean, not really releasing the air. He didn't really say rip open the walls. That would be like, that would be very hard to pronounce. He said, rip open the walls, right? Combining all of these words together. Would have to shut this place down for a week. Would have to. Again, the same thing happens to have to. He said, have to. Would have to shut this place down. Instead of saying shut this place down, he said, shut this place. This is another example of the stopped T. And then he said, for a week. Instead of saying four, like the number four, obviously native speakers would almost never say four, for a week. Instead, native speakers do it this way. Fur, fur, fur. A very quick sound. Fur, 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 for a week. And that's it. Okay, that's it guys. That's all for this video. I really hope right now you understand connected speech a little bit better. And yeah, again guys, if you want to master all of these rules and all of these sounds, all you need to do is watch more YouTube, watch more videos of people explaining connected speech, but at the same time watching native speakers. For example, TV shows in English and trying to pause repeat each sentence and like really see the patterns, noticing how they say certain words in English and when they combine some words together, when they drop sounds, when they change sounds, all of these things are very important. If you want to watch my latest video, you can click right here. I really hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to give Lingoda a try. All the links will be in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!